Welcome to Schools Challenge TV. In the next few episodes, we are going to be covering some topics that will hopefully help you to either build on your shooting or get into shooting or get your friends into shooting. So how do you get a job buying and selling guns? Liam recently started a job at the Oxford Gun Company. It was an easy choice of career for him. I've always been interested in the, in the country sort of pursuit and country sports side of things. Uh, a couple of friends of mine do clay shooting. So as you say, about a year ago now, we came down here, we'd done our first have a go day, uh, really enjoyed it. Really nice atmosphere, met some really nice people and then came back for the day course with Jeff, learned all the basic techniques that you need and all the basic targets. And then went on from there, like you rightly say, bought my gun and sort of haven't looked back since. I've learned that's a very social sport. There's, there's no class divide. I think some people sometimes think that to shoot that you need to be extremely wealthy or you need to have a bit of a privileged background. It's just, it's not the case. I've met so many new friends and so many lovely people through shooting and in the shooting industry. Liam is a local boy. Having a shop like the Oxford Gun Company on his doorstep is an advantage if you want a job like this. Yeah, I was brought up in South Oxfordshire. Um, shooting was very much part of my, my grandfather's life. Uh, he was raised up on a farm in Ireland. I enjoyed PE, science. Uh, I don't think anyone really enjoys maths as well. I went through school, finished school, I went and done an apprenticeship as a mechanic and then really sort of came to the end and sort of thought, well, I've done most of the jobs now, I want to try and go out and try something different. I came here on the day course, um, obviously quite new into clay shooting, really got bitten by the bug. That's all you sort of think about is, is once you start shooting, you wanted to shoot and shoot some more. And I thought, well, what a brilliant way to combine my hobby and my job and I'm privileged to, that most people don't get to do a job that they thoroughly enjoy. I work alongside Doug Florent at the Oxford Gun Company and I'm in there assisting him in the gun room, so in the, the purchase and the sales of shotguns, air rifles, air pistols, so it's a wide range of, of guns that we do buy and sell. Also training to become a shooting instructor as well. Uh, I go down to Breeden twice a week, go down there and I get to teach some fantastic kids you know what it's all about shooting and try and help them and let them start their shooting career as well. I cannot wait to come to work in the morning. It's, it's such a lovely industry. I've met so many lovely people. Um, no two days are ever the same and I get to work in a, an absolute beautiful place. Lovely countryside. Not many people get to see half of what I get to see. A love of guns as well as shooting helps in this job. It's always really interesting that in the gun industry that we work in to see something that was made a hundred years ago and someone is still enjoying it today it has exactly the same effect on something that was made six months ago and they enjoy it just as much if not even more. So what kind of shooters does Liam come across in his new job? We have a wide spectrum of, of clientele, you know, ranging from schools challenge children right the way up to your uh, experienced game shots that have been a game shot from since they were sort of 10, 15 and they've come all the way up. It's, it's having the right people to do the right job. Another young entrant to the shooting industry is Rosie Freeth, who also works at the Oxford Gun Company. I did a work placement through university and one of my friends that lives in the local village said to me, well, you like your shooting, so why don't you see if you can do a work placement at the Oxford Gun Company. So I applied and came here for five months. Then I went back to university and did another year, um, finished my degree and then came back here full time. Dad does a lot of shooting and he got me 
into clay shooting. One of his dad's, one of my dad's friends taught me how to shoot, and then I loved it so much that I shot for my school. Went to university and shot in the shooting team there. So I've always enjoyed getting out. That's why I'm still here. <laughs> No, it's good fun. Every day is different, so I quite like that. And I like interacting with other people that are keen into their shooting. It's nice to see youngsters getting into it, how I got into it, and hopefully they will also join the shooting industry and boost it that way, get fresh blood in. It is all very different to how Doug Florent started out in shooting. Many years ago, uh, Shirley and I bought a house and did it up and sold for quite a big profit and did what any two sensible people would do. We bought a sports car each and then I said two things I've always wanted to learn to do. One was to fly a helicopter and the other one was to go shooting. I never yet got round to learn to fly a helicopter but I drove past West London shooting grounds one day, drove in and um, said I wanted to learn to shoot and as luck would have it, my first lesson I had with Mike Rose, who is a brilliant shooting instructor um, for varying reasons, um, and he instilled in me a love of shooting. Doug started his career in the shooting industry at West London Shooting School and from there started a shop called The London Gun Company. And then 30 odd years ago, I came to the conclusion that I felt that high street gun shops were um, going to find it a little bit more difficult. So 30 years ago, we decided to buy Jericho Farm <laughs> and convert it into a gun shop and a shooting range, and which we did. And then three years later, I got bored with driving into London every day. So we sold the London Gun Company and moved everything out to Jericho Farm. Doug and his team at the Oxford Gun Company are keen to get young people jobs in shooting and he has come up with a way to do it. The problem we have now is 40 odd years ago when I first got involved with shooting, um, if you wanted to work in the shooting industry, you did an apprenticeship. If you showed a good aptitude and a good work ethic, then the shooting school would say, right, you've been here three, four, five years now, um, would you like to become a shooting instructor? If you said you would, you would then spend maybe the next year going around with one of the senior instructors learning how to teach people to shoot. Unfortunately, that um, has gone a bit by the board now. Um, and trying to find somebody experienced to work in a gun shop or shooting grounds is virtually impossible. So what we've done, um, we took on a, a young lad last year called Liam, who has come on very, very well indeed. And from that, we've come up with the idea of maybe doing what I'll call an apprenticeship scheme. If they, after a couple of years, decide that they want to go into gun sales, it can go into gun sales. If they would become a shooting instructor, they can pursue that. So our idea, although it won't be a pucka government-run apprenticeship scheme, it will work like an apprenticeship scheme. And basically it's finding people that are enthusiastic, have a, so I say, country outlook on life, um, and a good work ethic. One area the shooting industry looks to for its future captains is those schools and universities that encourage shooting sports. Raven School in Tewkesbury have for many years had a gun club there and there are several other schools that have gun clubs. But Breeden have taken it that step further. Um, they've realised that the discipline required from shooting actually helps children with their education. Um, they find that the children that go there and shoot uh, work well, they've got a certain amount of responsibility. It's fantastic that Breeden really do support the shooting industry and they promote shooting to the children by letting us go down like you say, we instruct two days a week and the kids are absolutely fantastic, they want to learn how to shoot, they're very enthusiastic. It's a fantastic resource for the children to be able to have 
to, ha to have that shooting ground at their school. So I, I can't see why more schools out there don't get involved with shooting and try and promote shooting and, and clay shooting and country sports to, to youngsters. Another area is the Schools Challenge, the largest young shots organisation in the UK, which takes kids from being non-shooters to being international class. Both Liam and Rosie are fans. I think it's really important what the Schools Challenge has done, especially for youngsters to come into the shooting world. It's, it's put shooting on the map for youngsters. I think so, only because when I started shooting I didn't have something set up like the school's challenge for me to start so I started by just shooting registers and it's all full of men and they're all looking at you you end up being the only girl there and it's quite intimidating whereas now with the school's challenge program it doesn't matter whether you're a girl you're young you're old everybody gets together and it's nice to shoot against people that don't judge you and give you confidence when you are shooting. So why go into the shooting industry? It's quite an exclusive industry to work in and obviously to work with someone like Doug Florent, who has, as you rightly say, 40 years of experience, it's incredible to be able to work with someone like that, that can teach me so much about the whole shooting industry. Well, we get more and more bigger shooting grounds now, and in the last couple of years, I've seen other shooting grounds looking for people to go and work there with experience, but nobody has experience. So they can go and work in a gun shop, they can go and work at a shooting school, um, they can do corporate days, they can do corporate entertainment, they will learn all that here. And you've then got uh, a, a very wide area that you can go and work in. And we're looking at some applications this year uh, for people who would like to get involved in the shooting industry. Um, and then we can take it from there. But, there are other shooting grounds around as well that will do a similar thing to us. Probably not in quite the same way, but I'm sure if you speak to West London Shooting Grounds or Holland Road, they would be more than happy to take youngsters on and teach you all about the shooting industry. I'm saying it's a, it is a fun and it is an exciting career to go for, you know, even if it's just not if you don't pinpoint it to the shooting industry, even the, the countryside, I don't think a lot of children get the right information at the right time. There's lots of children out there that, that do enjoy the countryside, unless they are brought into, the, into that family and the family are into it and that they come up through the family. I don't think a lot of them understand the countryside. So I think we, we really need to try and get across to them that what the shooting industry is all about and the countryside. And now we have the Schools Challenge News. The CPSA Awards nominees have now been announced. To find out who has been nominated in all eight categories, visit cpsa.co.uk. The CPSA Awards Dinner will be held on the 28th of March in Sheffield, where the winners will be announced. Mark Windsor wins a Range Rover worth £140,000 at the Royal Berkshire Stratstone Ultimate One competition. The competition required the winner to hit 23 or more in the final in order to win the all-new long wheelbase vehicle. Mark scored 25 out of 25. It's all changed this year at the English Open Sporting at High Lodge Shooting Ground. The number of targets has been increased to 120 and there is a new format as there is at the British with everyone starting on stand one. The Schools Challenge competitions start in March with the Oxford Schools Challenge and the University Championships. The spaces are filling up rapidly, so get your entry forms in quickly. You can enter as an individual or as a team of five. The two competitions can count towards your qualifying score for the 10th anniversary final where you will be in with a chance of winning a car and other great prizes. For the entry forms, visit theschoolschallenge.co.uk or call 01844 238 308. The Oxford Gun Company is counting on your votes for the Time Inc. Shooting Industry Awards Best Gun Shop and Shooting Ground. Please nominate your favourite gun shop and your favourite shooting ground or club to enter. Explain in no more than 150 words, your own, why you feel that your nomination should win. Send your nominations one shop and or shooting ground nomination per person by email to shootingindustryawards at timeinc.com with best gun shop or best shooting ground in the subject line. And finally, you don't need to speak Swedish to understand why. 100 Years of Clay Target Shooting, a film that shows shooting events at both the Stockholm 1912 Olympics and the London 2012 Olympics. It was uploaded by Swedish Olympic trap shooter Harkon Dalby. 
Now it's competition time. Do you want to win a subscription to Sporting Shooter? If so, you just need to answer this question. What is the most popular type of clay pigeon shooting in the UK? Is it sporting, trap, skeet? Email A, B or C to david at schoolschallenge.co.uk. The winner will be revealed at the end of February. Now, how easy is it to apply for a shotgun certificate in the UK? David Florent explains the process. It's easy. Anyone can get a shotgun certificate at any age, from 3 to 93. It costs you £50 for five years, which will be changing soon. All you have to do is go online, Google shotgun certificates, fill in the application form and, and send it off to your local police station. They will be in contact with you. They will organise a visit. Your local firearms officer will come down, see you, have a chat to you about shotguns, how to get into shooting, um, what you're going to do. You need to to know somebody, you need a referee that's known you for more than three years. That could be your doctor, that could be your school teacher if you're a youngster, that could be your boss, anyone. All they've got to do is know you for three years. He will sign, sign your photographs, your passport photographs that you'll get, send it all away. Within six to seven weeks, you should have your shotgun certificate. Thank you, David. If you don't have a shotgun certificate already, download the forms from your local constabulary website. That was Schools Challenge TV. I hope you enjoyed this programme. For more information on anything you've seen in this programme, please like us on Facebook or go to our website.